Charles Armstrong, and welcome to the Consumption Report, the new Seattle Untimely show where we pit two economic scholars against each other in a series of political dialogues and competitive eating events. In order to win, these contestants will have to muster both their eloquence and their appetites. To my right, we have newcomer Charlie Stockman, who belongs to the heterodox school of green economics. He is a challenger of conventional neoclassic economic thought, which he says encourages unsustainable resource consumption. Welcome, Charlie. And of course, on my left, the reigning champion, Eric the Red Denmark. Eric is a proponent of supply-side economics and an enemy of anything that stands in the way of efficient markets and potential output. Eric is also the current world Native American fry bread eating champion. Welcome, Eric. The first event will be Food for Thought, in which each scholar will have 30 seconds to respond to a topic while eating as much food as possible when not speaking. Charlie is the challenger. You will be up first. Your topic is corporate taxes, and the food will be hot dogs. Uh, actually, Charles, I'm a vegetarian. Ha <laughs> ha! Not tonight! And go! Well, obviously, I'm a big proponent of corporate taxes. You know, the fact is that corporations produce the vast majority of pollution. They're the ones recklessly depleting our resources. You know, they deserve to pay back the societal debt. You know, it's not just their wealth. We all labor. It's our earth. We're the guardians of it. I see. Interesting comments. And Eric, your response. <laughs> You know, Charles, instituting corporate taxes is like pulling the trigger after eating five or six hot dogs. I mean, if you're going to make me pull the trigger, I'm not going to eat six hot dogs. I'm only going to eat two. On. And then the farmer who's making the hot dogs, the factory worker who's producing the condiments, and the vendor who's selling the hot dogs are all out of business. Charles, then how green will the earth be? Excellent points on both sides, but I'm afraid I'll have to award the event to Eric. He ate two and a half hot dogs while Charlie only ate about three quarters. The next event! Materialism! Eric, you won the last round, so you start. You know, Charles, the tendency and the ability for consumer goods to change so rapidly is what makes America so great. Now, let's say you're at the ballpark and you only have one hot dog to choose from. Well, you're only going to eat one hot dog. But let's say suddenly you have polar sausages, you have hot links, and you have bratwurst to choose from. Now, you're going to need drinks as well. That's consumerism. Charles, that's change. That's absurd. You know, our society encourages addictive Charlie, consumption. you know the rules. You have to finish at least one hot dog before you can make your point. You see, you just took my hot dog. This is what I'm talking about. We need to manage our limited resources. Actually, no. We have plenty of hot dogs. Eat up. Oh. Furthermore, furthermore, we're not getting any more I'm time. sorry, you're out of time. You forfeit that round. Eric wins again. We'll be back after this message from our sponsor. Eat Nathan's hot dogs! Ah! Welcome back. While we were gone, Charlie had some interesting uh, reversals of fortune, shall we say, which I hope he won't be sharing with our viewers at home. Now, will he, Charlie? As a concession to Charlie's delicate values, we've decided to switch to an all-liquid diet for the next event. And that event is... How much can you swallow? As you viewers know, and how much can you swallow, we ask our contestants how much money they would like to see redistributed to a particular sector. They then will drink an amount of Rainier beer proportional to that amount of wealth redistribution. Tonight's question, what percentage of America's GDP should go to developmental aid in impoverished third world countries? Eric, you are in the lead, you begin. Well, Charles, theoretically I'm against developmental aid. Uh, let me give you an example. Developmental aid, not only does it take beer away from our party, but there's also evidence that it provides negative incentives to poor parties who end up funneling it to one guy who's drunk with power instead of giving it to the people who really need a cold one. Now, instinctively, I'm against anyone having a bad time, so I'm going to say 3%. That'll be three Rainiers for you. Charlie, I know in the past you've been a big proponent of wealth redistribution. How many Rainiers would you like to drink? Uh, well, that is true, Charles. Um, improved financial well-being would allow previously destitute people the luxury to look after their ecosystem. Furthermore, uh, it wouldn't be bad to remove some wealth from more, some of the more frivolous fat cats in our society. On the other hand, um, I don't really have to prove anything here. Uh, I'm going to pledge uh, 3.1%, and since we know I'm point one beers, I'm going to have three. Uh, you know what, Charles? I'm feeling benevolent. Let's make it 
Oh, come on, you hate poor people. Now that's enough, Charlie. You haven't even finished your 0.5% of that Rainier beer. I guess people in the third world don't need clean drinking water, do they? <laughs> this round goes to Eric. The next event, pick your poison. Here we give each of our contestants two choices. They choose one and pick their poison, so to speak. Yeah, I'm pretty buzzed. Yes, well, try to keep it together. Tonight's Pick Your Poison is viewer submitted, and it comes to us from Bert in Spokane, who asks, what's worse for the American worker, illegal immigration or outsourcing? Bert has also requested that these tall boys of Rainier Ale count for outsourcing, and these tall boys of Sparks Alcoholic Malt Beverage and Energy Drinks count for immigration. Eric, you're on the lead. Pick your poison. Well, Charles, I don't know if this is possible, but I'd like to choose both. And by both, I mean they're not poisons. They're both good. Good for the American worker and good for the American economy. I mean, if the American economy is going to compete in the global market, we can't put up fences. I mean, open markets mean more efficiency, and that means more for everyone. Now, if some industries have to adapt, well, that's just half the challenge, and that's all the fun. Now let's drink. You know what, I'd also like to take both, by which I mean they're both bad. Um, outsourcing allows companies to move their factories to countries with lesser environmental regulations. Furthermore, both by taking jobs away from rugged individual, blue blood Americans like you and me, Bert, just strengthens the global Jewish oligarchy and builds their armies of mongrel servile races. Wow. Well, that round clearly goes to Eric, who is not a racist. I'd like to thank Eric for joining us tonight on the Consumption Report. Congratulations once again on your championship, seven times running. Eric the Red Denmark, our current reigning champion on the Consumption Report. Charlie, good luck. Tune in next week when our guests will be Thomas Friedman and a wild boar with libertarian tendencies. For Seattle Untimely is the Consumption Report. I'm Charles Armstrong. Good night. Uh -huh.